Back in my army days, I was once in command of a unit of about 80 soldiers in Hawaii. Dialogue sections are the gist of what was said but it's been a minute so they're not exact. Names changed. Etc. TLDR. Soldier wants out of the army. Commander agrees. Ending good behavior. Soldier fucks around and ends up in the brig before getting kicked out. Most of the soldiers in my command were great people. Happy to do their jobs and take home a paycheck. Hard workers. Creative. Adaptable to unusual army conditions. And generally reliable. But there was one who was trouble from the start. Gentle reader. Meet Private Wiggles. My first awareness of Wiggles came two or three days after I'd taken over command of the unit. We're prepping for a month-long training exercise to Thailand and Platoon Sergeant Maggie tells me Wiggles might not be able to go as she just had an outpatient medical procedure. Departure is about a week away and I have to validate the personnel roster to make sure we've got logistical support for everyone we're bringing, transportation, food, lodging, etc. So I talk directly with Wiggles and ask if she's okay to travel and participate in the exercise. Wiggles says it's not a problem. She can handle it. We get to Thailand and set up camp on a Thai army base. Two days in. And the medical section sends a runner to find me. Wiggles is at our medical clinic tents with cots and surprisingly extensive medical supplies laid out with extreme abdominal pain. I cruise over to the clinic tent and the physician assistant physical affair on duty tells me a couple things. Wiggles acknowledged recently having an abortion the previously mentioned outpatient medical procedure. And the PA's examination and testing shows that Wiggles has the single worst case of pelvic inflammatory disease that he's ever seen. Seriously. This army physical affair who has seen all sorts of crazy shit from soldiers was emphatically impressed by how bad it was. Wiggles developed PID from failing to get treatment for sexually transmitted infections for a long, long, long time. As in. She's almost glowing from it. No judgment on the abortion. Not everyone is ready for kids. And the STI-induced PID can be treated with high-dose antibiotics which the physical affair has on hand. Not a problem. We've got this covered. Wiggles is released to Sergeant Sergeant Deb, her section sergeant, who will make sure Wiggles takes her antibiotics and keep an eye on her for any further issues. Sergeant Deb finds me and 1st Sergeant 1SG Bob about a day later and tells me two more things about Wiggles. She's refusing to take her antibiotics. And she wants to get out of the army. I again talk with Wiggles. Me. So you want out of the army? You know you have a couple years left on your contract. Right? Wiggles. I know. But I'm just done being a soldier and I want to be out of the army. Me. Okay. I can make that happen. You don't want to be here. Then I don't want you here either. But here's the deal, you gotta play by the rules. I can get you out with an honorable discharge. And I'll start the paperwork as soon as we're back in Hawaii. But you need to take your antibiotics, do your job, and be where you're supposed to be. You do your part and I'll do my part for you. Sound good? Wiggles. Yep. I can do that. Spoiler alert. She couldn't do that. For the rest of the Thailand exercise, Sergeant Dev had to take control of Wiggles' meds and force her to take them. When she could actually find Wiggles, who consistently found someplace else to be. At one point in the next week or so, she accuses 1SG Bob of having sex with her, easily disproven as he doesn't have any STIs and Wiggles has all of them. She was just trying to stir up trouble with wild accusations. I guess. We get back to Hawaii and I start the process to get her out of the army because as much as she's been a handful of trouble in Thailand, I'm thinking it's still easier at this point to kick her to the curb than it is to keep her around and punish her before kicking her out. I was wrong. Even as I start to work on her discharge, she ramps up the stupidity. Here are a few examples. Wiggles gets caught drinking only 19 years old. Wiggles and her husband lie to the on-base housing office and provide forged authorization documents to get into rent-free on-base housing that they didn't qualify for. Side note. Mr. Wiggles was no winner either, he was about to be dishonorably discharged from his infantry unit for selling drugs to other soldiers. Wiggles shows up at the infirmary to get treatment for facial bruising. Mr. Wiggles kicked her in the face while wearing his combat boots when Wiggles accused him of cheating on her. Wiggles refuses to show up for work, or any unit formation, and can't be found anywhere for days. Wiggles slashes all four tires on Mr. Wiggles' car, then attacks him with a knife when he confronts her. Military police are called, end up taking him in when Wiggles gives a sob story. But he's the one with defensive wounds on his hands, not her. 
one of my male sergeants uses my open door policy to visit me one day. Tells me he saw Wiggles stripping at one of the skankier gentlemen's clubs down in Honolulu the night before. And she had also convinced one of our other female soldiers to come along with her to do the same. Here's a weird one. I get a call from a temp agency asking me if it's okay for Wiggles to continue working through them as an administrative assistant for clients in town. Not uncommon for soldiers to have a second job. But with everything else she was up to at the time. This one just had me going WF? There's more. But you get the idea. At this point, Wiggles' actions are egregious enough that I can no longer just kick her out with an honorable discharge. I put her on notice that she's at risk for a court-martial. I thought that threat might keep her in line but she just couldn't seem to stop herself from getting stupider and stupider. It's the old 80-20 problem. 80% of your time is spent dealing with the 20% of your folks who are troublemakers. At this point I'm wasting a not insignificant amount of time dealing with Wiggles' issues almost daily. I had genuinely and in good faith offered her the easy path. But I guess she figured she'd try to burn the place down on the way out since she apparently thought she was getting what she wanted no matter what she did. I was reminded of what my old platoon sergeant used to say when I was coming up through the ranks. You wanna get stupid? Go ahead. But I can get stupider. Cue the revenge. She's causing me daily headaches so I'm going to bring the pain back to her. Honorable discharge paperwork is out the window. And I lean into the special court martial process instead. My legal counsel tells me that Wiggles' activities are likely to get her a couple weeks confinement at most maybe not even that. She may get a monetary fine. And she'll probably get another than honorable OTH discharge potential for a bad conduct discharge. Which are worse. But while her actions have been not that good they also are not that bad. I'm rational enough to understand that. I have a brief chat with Captain CPT Morgan Wiggles military defense attorney about where I'm going with this case. During our chat I try to be a gentleman and let him know that Wiggles is going to be trouble for him if he's not careful. He gives me a condescending this isn't my first rodeo. Baka. I'm a big boy and can take care of myself. Fair enough. I tried to warn you. Normally. A soldier getting a special court martial for piddly shit might get confined to the barracks. Restricted to their own base quarters. Or something similar for the duration of the process. It's not like she killed someone. Right? However. My military legal counsel drops this little gem in my ear. He tells me Wiggles has met all five of the conditions danger to others. Flight risk, etc. Required by Military Law Uniform Code of Military Justice, UCMJ to warrant requesting confinement prior to her trial. He tells me if you can remember these five conditions and elaborate on the details at our next pre-trial meeting with the military magistrate. You might be able to get her confined to the Navy brig at Fort Island until the trial. I'm a guy who likes to pay attention to sound legal advice. So I do just as he says. A couple days later we go in for the pre-trial meeting and I run down the list for the magistrate. Boom. Magistrate orders Wiggles to be confined in the brig through the trial. One SG Bob and Platoon Sergeant Maggie go to pick her up from her on base housing. She won't open the door. But they know she's inside because they can clearly hear her and Mr. Wiggles banging away. This is important for later. The Wiggles finish up. She takes her time getting showered and dressed. And finally comes to the door when it pleases her. Off she goes to the brig. The pre-trial processes take up the next four weeks. During that time, I have to deal with CPT Morgan, the paralegals in his office, and various fun things to do with her pending court-martial. Other than that, it's blissfully peaceful. Wiggles chills in the brig for four weeks seriously chills. Every time I had to visit it was freezing in there. I required to make weekly welfare visits to see if she's being mistreated, if she has any needs that aren't being met, etc. Seems weird. But as her commander I'm still responsible to make sure the brig staff aren't mistreating my soldier. Other goings on in this time period. Mr. Wiggles fraudulently applies for a car loan and gets a van in their names. Mr. Wiggles is dishonorably discharged and kicked off the island. Flies home to wherever the hell he originally enlisted from. CPT Morgan asks me to consider an OTH discharge and time served in lieu of taking things all the way to trial. I'm hot to get that pound of flesh from her. But my legal counsel advises me to avoid the court-martial and just kick out Wiggles with the OTH discharge. After all, he says she's already been locked up for almost three weeks so the magistrate will probably just give her time served in the OTH anyway. See my earlier comment about sound legal advice. My boss. Lieutenant Colonel LTC Ryan thinks I'm too invested in the case. That I'm no longer objective. LTC Ryan insists on coming with me to the brig for the next welfare visit. 
This is three weeks into Wiggle's stay in those luxurious accommodations. Among other bullshit lines she throws at us. Wiggles tells us she needs to see the dentist about a filling that's giving her trouble. And Motrin just isn't working. At the end of the visit, LTC Ryan tells the guards about Wiggles' filling. Asks if they can give her anything stronger than Motrin. Then instructs them to follow up with the dentist. Guard actually laughs out loud at this and says no sir. Motrin is the best we can do in the brig. And that other thing? For the last two weeks she's been telling anyone with ears that she wants to try getting her wisdom teeth pulled before she's kicked out. She doesn't have a problem with any fillings. It was hilarious to watch LTC Ryan's face go from obvious concern for Wiggles' well-being to outright fury. And the next words out of his mouth were that bitch lied to me. I make arrangements with CPT Morgan to accept his request for time served and OTH in lieu of court-martial. Sometime later that week I get a call from the brig. Wiggles is pregnant remember the scene at her house four weeks prior? And they can't keep her confined anymore because of it. She has to be released back to her unit until the court-martial or other actions are complete. CPT Morgan stakes his reputation on Wiggles being a good girl until we can send her back home to Carolina. He'll come to regret that. And he can't say I didn't warn him. We get Wiggles back from her four-week all-inclusive stay in the brig. I've accepted Captain Morgan's request to avoid the court-martial and I confine Wiggles to the barracks under supervision for the nine days she has left until her flight to Carolina. Immediately we have another shit show. Wiggles is smoking in the barracks not a big deal that she's smoking. It's just not allowed inside barracks rooms. Wiggles is caught with a bottle of hypnotic liquor in her barracks room she's still only 19. Wiggles slips out of the barracks and runs off for a day when her platoon sergeant gets distracted from supervising her. 1SG Bob and Lt. LT Ricky the executive officer go to collect Wiggles' belongings from her on base housing so we can box it up and ship it to her home. And they find that Mr. Wiggles has left behind a bunch of stuff he stole from other soldiers' body armor. Military equipment and some ammunition. Smoke grenades. And explosives that he stole during trips to the range. All lined up right inside the front door where it's impossible to miss. They call me. Asking what to do. Me. Just collect it all. Return the equipment to the central issue facility and dump the ammo and explosives in the nearest amnesty box. Mr. Wiggles obviously meant for Wiggles to take the fall for having a husband of the year. If we take that bait Wiggles will be here forever. I don't want that. Do you? LT Ricky. Nope. I don't want that either. It'll be like it never happened. In light of all this drama. I bring Wiggles into my office to remind her of her agreement to be a good girl till she leaves the island with LT Ricky as a witness in the office to protect my ass. Me. Wiggles. You're in violation of your release agreement from the brig. You've been sneaking out of the barracks. You've been smoking and drinking. Wiggles. She cuts me off yeah. And doing all kind of drugs too heavy sarcasm voice. Me. Be that as it may. I'm giving you fair warning that you're at risk of losing the deal I made with CPT Morgan. Additionally, you're pregnant again. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. But most damage to a fetus from alcohol and smoking will come in the first few weeks after conception. I don't know if you're planning to keep this one or not. But at the rate you're going this baby's going to be born dumber than you. Wiggles. Gaping like a damn fish. Finally picks her jaw up off the floor. Wiggles then bolts from of my office and runs down to LTC Ryan's office at the other end of the building to squeal on me for insulting her. LT Ricky hot on her heels. She tries to rush into LTC Ryan's office. But LT Ricky gets in first and fills him in. LT Ricky tells me later how it went down. Wiggles is yelling about how I called her stupid strangely vanilla thing to focus on considering everything she's done. But you do you and that she's being mistreated. LTC Ryan yells at his admin to get CPT Morgan on the phone. Now. He reams CPT Morgan for his client's jackassery. Tells him to fucking fix this. And makes various threats to CPT Morgan's career. About a half hour later I get a call from CPT Morgan. CPT Morgan. Baka. 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 Yes. He did that whole patronizing bullshit I can't believe the words I'm hearing from Wiggles. I'm shocked. Just shocked. That you would use language like that and call her names. Side note. My mom is an attorney. And I grew up with tales from the courthouse about lawyers using exactly this sort of hyperbole. Your honor. I'm shocked. Appalled. And dismayed that opposing counsel would attempt to paint my client in such a light. It's the kind of bullshit they said when they didn't have a good argument. So as soon as I hear the word shocked I know I own him and immediately cut in. 
Me. And I bet you're appalled and dismayed. 2. CPT Morgan. Stumbling and sounding slightly confused. Well. Yes. Of course I am. You can't talk to soldiers like that. I know of a lieutenant colonel, a commander, who called one of her soldiers stupid and she's no longer in command now. Me. I didn't call her stupid. I informed her of basic biological facts. Not my problem as she takes the news poorly. And arguably. She's not all that smart. Anyway. You called me and I'm pretty sure it wasn't to warn me about what I said to Wiggles. So what do you want? CPT Morgan. What will it take to prevent you from kicking back our deal? Apparently LTC Ryan had cinched his asshole up good and tight. Me. You could get her on a plane tomorrow. CPT Morgan. How about if I get her out of here by Friday? It was Wednesday. And she was due to fly out the following Wednesday. Me. I don't think you can manage that. But good on you if you do. To his credit. CPT Morgan gets Wiggles a flight for Sunday, three days early. I print up official orders appointing LT Ricky as a military escort specifically for her. LT Ricky drives her to the airport and the airline desk agent calls me to verify his status when they get to the check-in counter. They give him a special pass to get through security with her. He stays with her at the gate to make sure she gets on and stays on the plane. Then stays at the gate until the plane is in the air. Some boogers are hard to flick. We wanted to make damn sure this one landed someplace else. About a month later I get a call from the military police about a derelict van in the parking lot with all four tires slashed. Guess who that belonged to? It's really kinda sad when I look back on it. I had two other soldiers come to me at different points asking to get out of the army ahead of their contracts. One just didn't want to be in the army anymore. The other did want to stay in the army but had family issues that would be a lot easier to deal with as a civilian. They played by the rules and I got both of them out with honorable discharges and all the benefits. They even qualified for unemployment. Too easy. Wiggles could have had the same treatment, I told her exactly what I could do for her. Then had to shift gears and told her exactly what I was going to do to her. Then I did it. I could have been her best friend on her way out the door but instead I ended up owning her and her dumbass defense attorney. She screwed herself out of transition benefits and access to the VA and picked up a lifelong black mark for employment, all because she couldn't play nice for a few weeks. She decided she wanted to play fuck around fuck around games. And we all know what happens next. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support the channel, check out the link in the description with selected items you might like. See you tomorrow in the next story on RCupid.